Okay, so uh, this is the glass thing that we were looking at. Um, I've been playing around with this a lot, and I think I've got something that kind of works. Um, it definitely works better than what I had. Uh, so I'm just going to go through how I've set it up, how it works. Um, in fact, I'll show you how it works first. I think it would be easier. And then show you how it's set up. So actually what I've got is, if I delete this, my glass and make a material instance of it. And apply it to this object and to this object too. You can get a sense of uh, kind of what it's um, what it's doing. Now I've tried to make it sort of flexible enough that you could do it as a, pl a pane of glass like this. Yeah, let's see if it's bigger. Uh, and also you can use it for things like so I've done I've just knocked up this quick kind of massive. <laughs> you can see how it's working. So what it has is it has like a tint through it and it has reflections and refraction and it has some scratches as well. Um, but essentially you can the values aren't going to work for everything. Um, which is why it's important to set them up specifically for each like a flat plane and a tumbler don't aren't going to work the same way so if I jump back out of there and just fire up the actual um, instance where are you? there you are let's see this a bit more we'll see you Okay, so it's really quite annoying that. Obviously, you'd be doing this on two screens. So the parameters that I've got in here are, and I kind of just made up the, the names for things because they seem to be logical. It's not necessarily what they're actually doing. So I've got the ability to tint the glass, um, and I've got the ability to tint the scratches. So I can change the color of those. Getting nice and close here. Let's see, I could go in here and change these to red, yellow, whatever. I have a general control for the power of the Fresnel. So that's basically the Fresnel is the thing that is controlling the transition between flat surfaces and surfaces at glancing angles. So basically, the more you push this, the more it has an effect. The thing with the power is it has an effect on the refraction. So you can see it there, it's bending the light and also the opacity. Um, that's a convenience thing. You could split those things out if you found that you didn't want them to relate. Um, there's a switch, a static switch parameter in here on whether you want to use a normal map or not. So in the case of this flat plane, we probably won't want one. But in the case of this tumbler, this has a normal map, um, so we would probably want that. Um, in which case, we can hit this uh, static switch and switch it on, and then it gives us a slot for putting a normal map in. Um, and then we could just load our normal map in. The default normal map is the normal map for this, so this now has a normal map on it, and it behaves as if it has a normal map. So, but if you go back to this one, this one kind of, I mean, it's interesting looking, but it is broken because it doesn't need a normal map. It's just a flat plane. If I switch that back off, uh, which the use normal map off, there you go, we're back to just using a flat plane. Uh, we have in the opacity section, we have a front opacity. So that basically means anything that's fa any face that's facing you. This is the level of opacity, so the more I push this, the more we start to get reflections coming through. A bit broken, that's probably the capture, reflection capture actor being a bit broken. Um, down, 
and we can do uh, the side opacity which is basically the bits on the side um, if you push this really high you'll start to see it affect a flat plane so you'll get like a vignette in um, but I wouldn't recommend that that's how that should be used and then we have a roughness opacity which essentially is just pulling the roughness value up but that the effect of that is basically it just starts showing more of the if you want to actually want to have this tint to have some kind of real effect then that's where you're going to get it by basically applying your tint to there and just pushing this value up a little bit because you see it's a low value it doesn't really do anything so now we've got kind of red windows that's what we were after which probably isn't and that gives you that kind of window pane feel which is probably what you're after a lot of the time but as you can see that doesn't really work so well on the tumbler so it's well that's why we have the parameters um there are uh you can ch there's there's two things going on here we're using uh screen the screen reflections and cube map and, and a cube map as well cube maps just there to help sort of push the effect along um so if we look at the cube map intensity essentially by pushing that I'm essentially pushing the, uh, the effect of the cube map uh, that down we've got screen reflections uh, sorry basically make the scene use its reflections more this is essentially metalness so that's full which is what it comes through with and I'll probably leave it at that um, so you can basically turn it down the uh, refraction uh, basically deals with how much ref well how much refraction you're getting so how much the light's been bent um, so again refraction front if you're looking head on onto something if I start to push this value it will start to bend it more one is flat essentially um, but if you want to bend the sides more than or less than the front you can do that as well so you've got a lot of control over those uh, scratches you can change the scratches texture so in the case of this one just turn this down this has got generic scratches at the minute but if I go to my um, textures I have a, a roughness or scratches material there I could load that into there and then those scratches now are specific to that object um, and then I can change the multiplier if I wanted to so if I had generic scratches because obviously the scratches on here now don't work because they're for that particular thing but say I wanted to switch that off and just go back to using generic scratches I could actually use a multiplier on here that increases the and decreases that scales them I could have loads of small ones or some really big ones if I wanted so I'll go for that and then go back to our thing I can also change the contrast by pushing that I can basically make them stronger um, you can do this to a point and then it will break um, but you can see that it's you can dial them in and out which is quite useful so yeah I mean you know it's 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 not the most expensive glass ever made and um, it's probably not the best glass you'll ever make either but it will probably it will do the job um go back to our normal scratch and and like I say the way it's set up it's designed so that it can be used with a plane or a, something like an, an object uh, if you want to put dirt and stuff on top of it I would be inclined to have an extra sheet on the top and then just mask it and put the dirt on the top and not try and get them all to fit together because it's translucent it's just never really going to work quite how you want so if you have a look at the texture I'll show you it's actually set or the sorry the material we'll have a look at how it's actually set up so if I just jump up to 
That's the material. So the mass material is set up like this. Um, so we've got a series of things. We've got the first off, we've got the two tints. So we've got the glass tint, uh, which is parameter, and it's just basically um, I've got a default value in. So they're both of those are going into a lerp, and that lerp is going into base color. That lerp, the alpha of that lerp, has been driven by the scratch texture. So if we preview that. Um, you can see uh, that's that's oh that's basically coming from that red channel of that texture. If I open this texture up, you can see this default texture. So wherever you load in, it will default. It will take it from the red channel, which is probably where it's likely to come from. So it'll be a roughness. Um, so you can see in here, that's the roughness map. Okay, uh, let's get that out of the way. So, so what I've got plugged into there is texture coordinate, and I'm multiplying that using this parameter, which is the scratch UV multiplier. So, if basically this is set to one, this is set to one. If I increase this value to three, it'll be three times one, so it'll give me a value of three. So it'll tile it three times. That feeds into this scratch texture, which then goes on and feeds into this lerp. So, if you look at the way this lerp's set up, then um, basically, because that lerps like that, this is the texture that's coming. This is the tint that's coming through, which is blue for the glass and white for the for the scratch, and that's going into the base color. Simples. Um, so, next up, metallic. So this screen reflections node is basically just going into the metallic, and this basically controls how much of the uh, reflection from the um, from the uh, probes in the scene affect it and um, so this defaults so this is the default value of one and you can just basically knock it lower to switch it down and essentially make it less metallic i know the metallic thing seems a bit weird for glass but it's just because it's a behavior of glass and you want to get lots of reflection in it so metallics work better um the next one down is the roughness so the roughness is basically if we kind of go away way back if you imagine what we're doing with the roughness we're basically um, we're trying to separate out the glass and the scratches we want the scratches to be rough and we want the glass to not be rough so we're using this again this scratch texture and I'm feeding that as the alpha into a lerp and I basically have these two values now these two values would essentially be uh, values which control um, the the, the dark end and the light end but actually when you look at the behavior of them in the actual um, shader they kind of seem to do something feel like they do something different so I just named them to sound like what they do so roughness opacity this basically pulls the general um, the this is the thing that we, when we looked at the that brought the tint through and um, this is the in fact you could call it opacity tint or tint opacity would be a bet would be a better name for it. Let's call it that. Um, and then scratches uh, contrast uh, is basically you push this value up and it makes the scratches come through more. Um, anyway, they feed, both of those feed into the roughness and that's that one covered. Uh, next up is emissive color. So the emissive color is basically I'm just going to delete that. That's in there. Emissive color is basically, uh, if we work our way back, mm, this is a, it's not a suit, this thing. Get this out of the way. Uh, is basically, all right, yeah, so the emissive color is basically, so we are, this is where the cube map feeds in. So we have a cube map, which is just a HDR map here, which is this, there's a Deal to thing, uh, uh, but for us to be able to use a cube map, we need to plug in a reflection vector so that it behaves the way it's supposed to. That feeds into a multiply, and then we're using this thing to create to create cube map intensity. So if we look at this preview, this node, essentially by pushing this value up, uh, we make it brighter or. Uh, 
darker, basically. Uh, let's get that back to one. So that's basically the brightness of the, the light that's coming in and hitting that surface. And obviously this is a parameter so you can feed in different cube maps. This isn't probably the most ideal cube map ever for this job. I just, it was one I had. So that basically is added to, uh, to this, which is the uh, lerp for the... Um, for the scratches the idea being that um, and then this is and then for this to actually work this has to be inverted so there it is and then it is multiplied that is multiplied with the Fresnel function uh, which we've not really talked about yet but let's just assume that we have talked about that and it makes more sense the second time around you watch it um, so then when we look at this Essentially what we've got is this combination of black scratches and uh, a black face on value, which is the bit that Fresnel does, and then the sides are kind of brighter. And that essentially becomes... Uh, that becomes like a mask, um, and we add that to what we've done with the cube map. this and then feed that into the emissive color and uh, and what that will do is it will give us areas that don't get any emission from the the cube map which is going to be the um, scratches and um, it generally gets brighter towards the edges which is a bit of a fudge but it kind of works um, right so the next one down which is probably the mo one of the more important ones is opacity uh, we have a fair bit of stuff going on here so Let's start with the, the main thing. The other thing to say as well with this is if we look at this, the way this is actually set up is we are using translucent as a blend mode. And I'm also using under the lighting mode, I'm using surface translucency volume, um, which gives, seems to be giving the best results. Um, so let's start with the Fresnel function. So the Fresnel function is basically this so this basically says anything that's facing you is black and anything which is facing away or is at a glancing angle like 90 degrees is white and then it'll create a blend between the two and the Fresnel allows us to basically create this effect that when we're looking directly onto the glass we're getting less reflection less refraction or than we are when we look at it look at the where the, in the angles where it's bending the light and it's receiving more of the reflection and um, as far as our eyes are concerned um, which is a phenomenon we see generally. So we can use this as a mask to do that. So if we see this in terms of opacity, then basically this is feeding into a lerp. The lerp has basically got two values, front opacity, which is uh, this part, and then side opacity, which is this part. And essentially we can um, preview, we can use these values to basically change the way this behaves and um, we learnt that we bang the Fresnel into the alpha and then what we do on top of that is we're just adding back in the scratches um, so that when we look at it here we're essentially getting um, anywhere where the white is we're basically going to get one we're going to get it, it's going to be more opaque than it is in the bits in the middle um, and that's a good thing in the sense that um, where the scratches are going to be less see-through and um, so that's it basically so uh, that goes into opacity and that basically means uh, we have it very see-through in the middle less see-through at the sides and it's not see-through where the scratches are uh, so that's what that's doing and then below opacity we have a normal 
the normal map business. Now the way the normal maps work in here is basically we have two things. We have a normal map and then we have a uh, three constant vector which just has um, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 1 which will give us a flat, as close as we can get to a flat normal. Um, and we have this thing called a switch. So if you right click, if you right click and do a search for switch, it is a static switch parameter. That's what you want. Um, and essentially it's set up to say, so the, the parameter name is use normal map. And um, it has, a, it's basically the default value it's switched off. So that basically means it's set to false. So it means that when this is running, it will default to use this, which is just a value. So that means we can use you know, a flat thing. But if we want to use a normal map, we just click this thing on and it activates the normal map. The normal map itself is a parameter. Um, so it means we can swap out the normal map. And uh, that's... And the only other thing we've got is the refraction. And the refraction is pretty straightforward. It basically is same thing again, same deal again. We've got this bad boy here, uh, which is a combination of the um, uh, the uh, Fresnel and the scratches, um, and anywhere that's black will use the refraction front value. And anything that's white will use the refraction size value. And these are set slightly differently. I mean, in real life, 1.3 is meant to be glass. Um, so I just have front set to 1.2 and refraction size set to 1.5. But again, they're both parameters that can be changed. And that's fed into refraction. And that's it. Um, so it's, it's, it's complicated enough, but um, it's not. It's not the most complicated thing um, ever invented. So, um, yeah, that's it. Hopefully that is useful. Let's close that down. Change the name of that thing. There's that. And then our instance is basically, it has all of those values in. And we can just play with them as we see fit. Um, that's it. Good luck.